Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Anime King. And today I'm going to be giving you part 3 of What If Naruto Was the Hope of the Uchiha Clan. Remember to get this one to 100 like as usual. Share this to all of your friends in your social media platform. And also guys, go ahead and check out the brand new episode of What If Naruto Was the Legendary Uchiha X Namikaze and enjoy that guys over in Anime King 2. I also post a brand new episode over in Making 3 of What If Naruto Was Exiled from the Osuski Clan. So go ahead and check out that and enjoy, guys. And remember, if you're new, to go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become a part of the Making family. And thank you for all of your help and support. Remember to comment down below and tell me if you're new. I'll be replying talking back to all of you. So, yeah, without further ado, we'll just begin this new episode. Start the intro. So the last time we left off, as Naruto learned about his affinities, which were water and lightning, as he started training with his aunt. In doing so, some time passed after that, a couple of months. As Naruto spoke to his father, his father did not hate him but his father did not like him either. As Naruto told him that he did not like him either, that was when Naruto learned the truth. Why? The man did not like Naruto like he liked his other children. It was because of her, his mother. As she was told that there could be some problem in the pregnancy, but yet she did not terminate. She chose to have Naruto, she chose to die. And the man was angry about that and he kind of blamed Naruto for it. So that is the reason he could never fully accept or love Naruto. And from that day on something changed. As Naruto continued to train his aunt to notice that there was something different in the boy. Something that was damaged, that couldn't seem to be repaired. As Naruto made his way one night out of the compound, that is where he met the giant 9 tailed fox. He was shocked to see the massive beast just there near his clan. As Naruto was scared but yet he stealed his fear. He could not die, he could not die because he could not meet Madara. He could not meet Madara, feel that much pain knowing that he was the last brother who died. The fox was curious as he let Naruto live. As Naruto made his way off, more time passed it was finally time for Naruto to write the passage as his father would be the one to be fighting him. Even though Naruto had a turn gun, his father was quite powerful, as his father was able to create clones, including water clones. Their battle was fast. His father was coming in hard and heavy. He did not hesitate to deliver serious blows to Naruto. His aunt and Madara had to jump in to end the match, as there was no longer a reason for them to go on. His father seemed upset by that, but he granted Naruto passage as he was known as a full Uchiha now. At first he wasn't a full Uchiha because he never passed a rite of passage before. More time passed as Naruto went to visit the fox. He also brought him food. As Naruto realized something, the fox was here, watching over his clan. He didn't know what his clan did or what was going on but the fox was watching over his clan. For good or bad he did not know, but he was sure he was not something good. As the fox told him that he was quite skeptical. But the way it spoke, Naruto knew that it had a hidden agenda. The fox decided to eat with it even though it didn't have to eat. As it just looked at Naruto curiously. A couple of days passed after that as Madara received news that something was happening at the clan as he rushed back as fast as possible with his members in tow. And when he arrived, the sight that greeted him was shocking as he saw fallen Uchiha's around. And in the middle of all of his chaos was none other than Naruto Uchiha, his brother. Madara was shocked to his core. So yeah guys, that's basically what I thought you guys can switch across the place check for yourself. So what do you say begin this new episode? Madara could not move nor could he breathe. Watch this younger brother sitting in the midst of that chaos, blood stained massacre. With a sword in his hand that was coated in blood, time seemed to have stopped for Madara. As he neither focused on the dead bodies or anyone else around him, he focused on his brother. As this was not the same brother. So full of joy and innocence, one who was far more honorable and kind than any other Uchiha, 
of his generation, no, the person sitting down in that chair was completely different. For in those eyes they were hidden, unspeakable horror and unimaginable pain. Near a dozen Uchiha guards marched towards him. As Naruto got up, they stopped. Stop before I kill you all, he warned. There wasn't a single hint of emotion in his voice. Every one of the Uchiha's glared at him, unending hatred in their eyes. Kinslayer, traitor, you're a monster, oath breaker, a man without loyalty or honor. Madara watched as his father stood, even as their clansman breathed. His son, Tajima, had no great love for Naruto, but this was going a bit too far. As their father, why wasn't the man defending his own son? Despite their curses, no one stepped towards Naruto. But they must have took his silentness for cowardness as two older men charged towards Naruto with great speed. The moment they reached towards their swords, all they saw was a bright blur as they screamed as their legs were sliced open. They dropped to their knees trying to gash, stop the large gash on their legs. Madara was too horrified and shocked. As Naruto pulled Takuna and threw it, he marked a boundary as all of them understood. Cross that line and make your end. The sight of the two wounded Uchiha, and not to mention the massacre that happened earlier, made everyone flinch away in terror. The ear was thick with killing intent, fear, rotten flesh and doom. Madara felt like his worst nightmare come through. If losing three brothers in one battle was heartbreaking, this was ripping him apart. The worst part was he didn't know what to do. Fortunately for him and their furious clan, someone did. Enough! Despite the dangerous situation, Tajima, voice was calm. I command you to surrender now, Kinslayer, said Tajima. Madara did not look at his father or the furious people that protested for Naruto's death right here right now. But what he saw was Naruto's lips trembling a bit. His lips tremble a bit. They tremble, yes. The moment his father said that name, Kinslayer, as Naruto raised his sword up in the air, before he stabbed it down into the ground. Several guards appeared and grabbed him as they kept him away from the crowd so he wouldn't be killed. But the people shouted Kinslayer over and over again. Madara walked towards his father's eyes burning with rage. What happened he asked. Your brother went mad and killed these people. Now I have to sort out this mess and render justice. Bullshit said Madara with absolute anger in his voice. He would never do such a thing. Your love for him make you blind for his shortcomings or for his crime, Madara. Think about the clan. Screw the clan, said Madara. Tajima's eyes widened, hearing the loyal and obedient Madara say those words. Granted, he did not scream them on top of his throat. So, the members did not hear as they had already moved off, shouting clan slayer. He's my brother. I don't care what he is or what he has done. I know him better than you ever will, and nothing will ever make me believe that Naruto did this. Or even if he did, there had to be some reason. And if you do him any harm, then what boy? asked Tajima. Madara's eyes became so cold, the place actually started to get colder. I will kill you, said Madara. With those words, Madara made his way off to where his brother was being placed, leaving Tajima shocked with those words in his mind. I will kill you. Time skip. It was dark. Darker than most places that Madara ever seen in his life. Only the flickering candle on the wall show light in his place. As he saw heavily armed guards outside one of the cells, when he approached, all of them held on to their blade as he placed the hilt on it. No one is allowed to visit the King Slayer without permission from Tajima Sama. Warn Yamato Uchiha as he had a nasty scar on his face. He is my brother, said Madara. As his eyes flashed red as Mink, all of them took a step back except for Yamato because they all knew before he even awakened the Sharingan Madara was stronger than them all. But Yamato glared even harsher. He killed my cousin. For the first time Madara felt some of his anger seep away as indeed this man had lost family tonight. As he deactivated his eyes and looked at the guards tiredly. I need to know what happened, he's my brother. And while I have always been loyal to the clan, I will not hesitate to harm any of you. If you get in my way, Yamato looked at the boy for a long moment before he shook his head in disgust. Tajima Sama will hear of this, Madara, but go and meet the King Slayer because likely you'll be executed tomorrow morning, said Yamato as the other guards nodded. Madara simply smiled. You are free to try, he said. They got out of his way and opened the wooden door, protected by seals. 
as Mother could feel killed intent directed towards him, so he turned. Murderous rage in his eyes. I will slaughter your entire family and those who even tried to harm my brother. Do not forget your places. You are allowed to voice this much protest because my family allows it. I love our clan and I will protect it to my dying breath. But I will not hesitate to murder you all. Should you or anyone else lift a finger at my family. Do you understand? He said. He was satisfied when the three of the guards pissed themselves and the other two was shaking in fear, including Yamato. And while this was not the way he liked to treat his clan member, his father had always placed one single fact, one single fact into his brain. We are the blood of a dragon, and dragon only respects strength. If you show weakness for even a second, you doom yourself forever. Madara family had retained leadership for centuries in their clan, because their family had the strength, the power to do so. And while they did so to make their clan flourish, his ancestors protect their family against anything, no matter who they were. Time skip. He grabbed one of the torches as he entered because inside was even darker. A pure furred eye stirred him in the darkness. Madar did not waste time as he moved forward and hugged his brother, even though he was covered in blood. Madara, I'm here little brother, said Madara. You should go, said Naruto. He brought the hug and stare into those fully evolved sharing on eyes. If someone tell him years ago that Naruto did the first one to achieve, the full power of those eyes, he would scoff. But his brother had proved himself far from ordinary. Why? said Madara. I killed them all, said Naruto. Despite Madara's shock, he never looked at Naruto accusingly. Naruto looked away. Unable to hold Madara gaze, but Madara grabbed his chin and made him look back at him. No matter what happens or what you did, I will always have your back. Promise Madara. Why? said Naruto. Because we're brothers, said Madara. As Naruto nodded as he whispered something to Madara, he told him what happened. When Naruto was finished, Madara was shocked. He was angry as Naruto was in tears. Kinslayer said Naruto as he looked up at the ceiling. Don't say that, said Madara. It will not change the truth, brother. This is who I am, and it will remain that way until they execute me. No one will harm you, little brother. Not while I'm still breathing, said Madara. As he grabbed Naruto's hand and squeezed it firmly with his own. You'll fight for me, said Naruto with hope in his voice. Do I have a choice, said Madara as he smirked. As that made Naruto smile a bit, a grim smile though. Father has no love for me, and I guess after what I did, he will be forced to take actions likely to demand it for the execution of the King Slayer. As Madara frowned, hearing that word once again. That may be true, but don't forget, you're the heir to our clan in case I die. You're also the only other person than me. To be able to wield the Sharingan in centuries, despite what has happened, the clan needs you, said Madara. You cannot fight against the entire world for me, said Naruto. Knowing despite all Madara's power, he was still one young boy. I can, Madara said firmly. As he walked towards the door and pushed them open, as he paused. Because, I am Madara Uchiha, he said. Time skip. As Madara didn't waste any time as he entered the upper floor level of his father's room, as both Tajima and Nero was in there. As the both of them were holding a cup of steak in their hand. Have you forgotten your manners, boy? said Tajima, darkly. What are you going to do with my brother? Christian Madara. Tajima did not answer, so Madara stepped forward but stopped when Nere looked at him with a pleading gaze. Looking into his aunt's eyes, he came to a stop as Tajima spoke. The people are demanding his head, Madara. And you're going to give them just that, aren't you, father? You never loved them. Surprisingly, Tajima simply nodded. Yes, I've never loved your brother, but he's my son, and I do not want him to die like this, said Tajima. Neither do I. It's going to be hard to protect him. He killed a lot of people, said Neri in a hesitant tone. Do what you want, said Madara. But know this, as they looked at him, if anyone tried to hurt my brother, you will have two kin slayer and a lot of dead Uchiha. Madara, I know the truth, father, said Naruto. Tajima eyes wide in horror, as he realized that Naruto told Madara why this happened, the truth of the reason why he killed those people. Despite Tachima warning Naruto to keep his mouth silent. But then again, Madara was all Naruto had left in his life. So, if anyone else, he would tell Madara the truth. Despite everything, Tachima knew that his family was safe. Because of the unflinching loyalty within his two sons. He could see it now Madara was not an ordinary person. And not just because of his powers. But in those cold, black eyes, Tachima saw unending strength. This boy was strong, incredibly so. And he had the power to make one kneel. Piss themselves in fright if they stand against him. 
he was Mother Uchiha. Yet, when the Uchiha's offer passed this tragedy tonight, it would not be just because of Madara. It would be because of another boy as well. But he would never be loved or admired like Madara. He would be spat upon for the rest of his life. Someone who parents could warn their children about, so they would not become like the King Slayer. We will handle this, said Neri, as she looked unflinching into Madara's eyes. He looked towards her for a long moment. He nodded and walked towards the door. Where are you going? said Tajima. When Madara was angry, it was not good to, well, be around him. But right now he was utterly pissed. Tajima did not fear for Madara's safety. He feared for those that might curse Naruto's name around him. To the dungeon, said Madara. You can't be there, said Neri, as Madara's cold eyes land on her. I will be there, he said. Guard my brother and any fool that tries something will lose your head by my sword. See that no one attempts such stupidity, aunt, said Madara. I'll bring him to you tomorrow morning. Call the council and the elder, said Madara. I will address them. They won't listen to you, said Neri. Even if Madara was a strong fighter, he was still a young boy to the older ones. He gave her a chilling smile in return. It was simple, if they won't listen. He would cut off their useless ears. The next day, when Naruto entered the council chamber, in prop inside his own house, he saw all the members there. Most of the council was comprised of the members with smaller wealth and had the most powerful fighters. Those see change every now and then, either if they lost their fighters or the wealth drop. The same was for the elders, but they were changed by either the clan head or when they died. All of them earned their merit on work that they did now, not by their dead ancestors. And for him, being a king slayer only meant one thing. There was only one punishment, death. As he saw it in their eyes, all of them, King Slayer, as he looked towards him, Madara was there. As Naruto was dressed in scant dark robes, as Madara insisted, but all of his weapons were gone, leaving him open for attack by any of these mans or women. But he doubted that could happen, as Madara stood in front of him like a bloodhound. As he loved his older brother even after knowing the real truth of what he did, why he did it, his brother never turned his back on him. As Naruto always knew his brother was a stronger fighter, but now he knew another fact. As Madara was a better man than him, whatever his fate today he was proud of his brother, and he vowed if he survived to stand by his brother no matter what happened. Tachima was the one to speak breaking in silence. Naruto Uchiha, you have been accused of killing your own clansmen. What do you plead? As Tachima got straight to it as everyone wanted to get straight to it as well. Guilty. The chamber would have exploded in anger if Tachima had not raised his hand silencing them. Why did you do such a thing? asked Ayato Uchiha, an elder, who lost one of his eyes and both of his hands fighting for the clan. As Naruto went quiet, the glares got even worse as Madara wanted to snap and slaughter them all. They had no right to glare at his brother like that. They didn't know anything. We should execute the king's leer, Hutura Uchiha said, as she lost her younger brother by him. He has confessed his crimes and the law is clear, said Tamiya Uchiha. Various other demands were raised by the council. Tajima remained silent but his elder son was about to explode he could see it. Unfortunately, many had lost some of their family, many a part of the council, many of them. And because Tajima was silent, they took his silent for weakness. As one of them gestured to the nearby guard. As the first guard took a step and the nine others followed, Madara Joy's blade as his turned them flare to life. Madara, they gasped. What's the meaning of this? Hodoru glared at Madara. You have lived your entire life for the clan, Madara. Are you going to die for the King Slayer? Madara killed in tent, washed over the room as the guards dropped to their knees as they had to grip onto the railing the council members. Someone will. Enough! Tajima shouted, stop all of them. Even Madara lowered his sword as Tajima got from his chair. I will not execute Naruto. But out, Tajima said. The woman shocked as she looked towards Tajima. You are removed from this council. Tajima says he looked towards Hodoru. Your family debarred for 10 years from contesting your seat. Naruto was shocked. He knew that his father was powerful. But this was the first time he saw it. the man in action. Hodoru Uchiha actually bowed respectfully before she walked out rather quickly as the other council members went silent. I know what he did, but you forget he has a Sharingan and he's one of our most powerful fighters. He and Madara help us win that battle against our enemies the Senju, and our enemy fears us because of the Sharingan. More importantly, he's my son, said Tajima. 
Many of the people lost their power, as they realized the power that Naruto held. Killing him was easy, but it would harm the clan and hurt a lot of them because he was a dangerous person, even more so with the Sharingan. Maybe you're right, Tachimasama. And while we still don't know why he killed his own people, he is still a new adult. And am I right to assume that Madara is against this decision? Yamasho Uchiha asks. He was the father of Itachi Uchiha and one of the more influential members of the council. You kill my brother or even try to harm him. I will kill the fool that tried this madness and also I will leave the clan forever, said Madara. Without hesitation, the council started to panic after all Madara was one of their most powerful fighters. In the future, he had the strength to become the strongest and butcher all the Senju with his own hands. While killing, Naruto would be a big blow. Taking up Madara would cast your clan into nothing but darkness. Nier took another approach. I personally apologize for what Naruto did, but he's still a boy. And we don't know if someone influenced him to do such things. Maybe one of our enemies could have. I find that hard to believe, our elder said, looking at Naruto harshly. Whatever the case, I will not execute my son. Nor will I let his crime go unpunished, said Tajima. Madara was about to protest, but Naruto grabbed his hand and shook his head. As he calmed down, Naruto Uchiha said Tajima, For your crimes, I denounce you. Madara's eyes widened in horror at his father's actions. I strip you from the family. As my ear after Madara, even the council members seem shocked, and the elders as well. And I banish you from our lands and hometowns. For 10 years, Neri lowered her gaze. She knew the last part would be the harshest. I forbid you from marrying, from having children, from owning any lands. From this day forth, you shall serve as Neri bodyguard, protecting her on clan missions, should your behavior or actions be redeemed after the next 10 years. I, or the next clan head, will bring you back into us. But you shall never have a family for all the ones that you destroy with your actions. As Madara was gripping his sword tightly, waiting for his brother to ask for some help. Because this sentence was worse than death. It was aimed to turn a man's life into living hell. As most of the council members realized that killing Naruto would be a merciful action and it would not heal their wounds. But this, the boy would suffer, is every moment a living hell. And despite it all, he would still be a Uchiha to be used for their services. As Madara grabbed Naruto's shoulders and looked at him sternly. You don't have to do this. I do, said Naruto. Why, said Madara. They don't deserve your loyalty, he said. I'm not doing this for them, said Naruto. Then why, said Madara. For Aizna. For our brother who died so this time to live and flourish. I promise I would give them my service. Protect what they die for, no matter what happened. And I will keep my word, said Naruto. Madara was proud and heartbroken at the same time, at Naruto's decision. But the pain, as Naruto smiled, as long as I have you, I don't need anything else. A lone tear slipped from Madara's eye. As Naruto turned his head towards his father, I accept, he said. Time skip. Two weeks later, Naruto stared in front of a lake in front of his family home, a place that he has known for his entire life, where most of his happy and sad memories were. As he looked around at a lot of things, with a lot of memories attached to them, currently he was wearing his clan gear. He was about to depart from his home for a very long time, perhaps forever. If he couldn't manage to survive out there until he was told he could come back. If such a time ever came, he touched his cheek as his face was covered by a face mask to avoid the glares and the jabs being thrown towards him. The few days had been chaotic. While many were satisfied with judgment placed on him, the others still wanted his head. Fortunate for him, the elders' watchful eye and Madara's threat to slaughter their entire families kept them at bay. But it never kept at bay those harsh whispers, those heated glares, or the term that was now attached to him, Kinslayer, something that would never disappear even after he died. Unlike what his clan or every other family thought, he didn't commit those murders because he was manipulated or out of madness, nor did he willingly accept his judgment to save his own life or continue being loyal to the clan for the sake of his dead brothers. He did it because it was his duty. For in this world of never ending war, he will never find any family to be a part of except for the one that he was born in. Yet, he was given this name that was attached to him now. That is the reason why he took this mask, hide his face. Whenever he heard that name Kinslayer, it made him smile. 
A smile for happiness or sadness. No one knew. But he smiled. Because he knew why he did it. And he did not regret his actions. But if they saw his smile, it would send the wrong message. And while he was powerful and could defeat all of his assailants, even he had his limits. Besides, his family was already enough trouble. And there was no need for him to add further trouble to them. He was disrupted from his thoughts as someone stepped beside him. You're ready. He looked towards his father and saw his father's stony look was replaced by something he could not understand. Yes. We leave at midnight per near Sama. Decision. It is better. Let's arrogant fools to be entertained. As Tajima had a sad smile on his face. When you hear them whispering Kinslayer behind your back, doesn't it bother you? As Tajima watches Naruto look towards the lake with such hardness in his eyes, hardness that should never be there for someone so young. Of course it bothers me, but I will deal with it, said Naruto. For what it's worth, said Tajima. I am so Tajima stop. As Naruto turned towards him his gaze, looking so murderous. Do not mock my duty, father, Naruto warned. You proved me wrong, you know, said Tajima. As Naruto watched his father looked at him with almost a caring look. How? I always thought that you were the weakest among my son. That you were soft and you didn't have the talent for fighting. But when it was needed, you stood up for the clan, your honor, your family, and even me. You sacrificed yourself for all of us. Father, I... Naruto hesitated. As Naruto couldn't believe what he was seeing, his father is cold. Heartless old man, on the verge of tears. Madara might be more stronger than you, but you have a strength that he will never have. You are so much like your mother in that way, said Tajima. As Naruto eyes lowered towards the ground. Look where they got her, said Naruto. He looked up when a firm hand was placed right on his shoulder. She never regret giving you life. She gave you your name. She wished you the best in life and she died, holding on to you. As Naruto was trembling as Tajima hold on to him. Mothers are powerful son. Even dead, she lives on in you. Giving you her kindness and giving you her love. And her strength to overcome all the challenges that might come your way in the future. She gave you everything that I will never give you. And yet what you did for me is something I will never forget, said Tajima. As Naruto looked up towards the man. You gave me life, father, he said. Tajima looked away from those powerful eyes. That was so much like his wife. As a single tear ran down, Tajima's cheek. It took him a while, but he managed to get himself under control. As he turned back towards his son. As he surprised the boy by giving him a blade. A long steel blade. With a hilt. Having a symbol of a dragon on it. Naruto was shocked, speechless. I, I can't accept this. It's not my right, he said. This ancestral sword was given to me by my father. And to him by his own father. And so on. My father, while giving me this sword, told me it's not a weapon to slay your enemies alone, but a symbol, a oath that you took to take care of the clan and protect it from all the enemies, no matter who they are. A promise that you can be just and fear to your people. Ever Uchiha clan leader, pass down this here loom to the one that can lead the clan towards a better future, Tajman said. But I'm no longer your ear, father. It's Madara's by right, said Nuto. He didn't want to take something that belonged to a brother who fought for him so fearlessly against everyone, willing to stand by his side through thick and thin. Madara will hold his stand together with his power, but he lacked the vision. But you are different and I entrust you this with the hope that you will find a better future for our clan. Besides, Madara hates swords, said Tachima with a faint smile. As Naruto blink, did, did you just joke? I shouldn't, asked Tachima. As Naruto was surprised, his father would make a joke. I, as touch my smirk, you did it on purpose, said Naruto, and they laugh. For the first time, the both of them laughed together as Tajima ruffled Naruto's brown locks that was so much like his wife. Do what your aunt says and try not to give her too much trouble. And if I hear a whisper of you visiting poor houses or bars, disgrace in the family name, I will make you a eunuch, Tajima said. As Naruto simply rolled his eyes, as if King Slayer wasn't enough, he said. What was that? Nothing, said Naruto. As Tajima sighed, I say this because woman and alcohol is a shinobi, greatest weakness. You cannot be a warrior if your senses are distracted by any matter 
I see great potential in you. Don't waste away, said Tajima. As Naruto nodded. And try not to fall in love or some other foolish notion. I will not allow such a thing, Tajima said. Father, you did just forbid me from love and having a family. That would only be more painful for me if I fall to such foolishness. The bot that he received on his head made him wince as Tajima looked at him. I only say that because it would make it rather difficult for me to find you a proper Uchiha woman. As Naruto looked at his father, surprise. Did you really think I was going to sacrifice you for those fools when I know the truth? Let them cool over your absence. We'll accelerate the process while what you've done become a distant memory. I suggest that you do something great or extraordinary that will benefit the clan immensely to further bring you back amongst our people. It won't be easy, but it's not impossible, said Tajima honestly. But what if they don't change their minds even then, said Naruto, still in shock. As Tajima scoff, a dragon doesn't concern himself with sheep, said Tajima. As he had a grin, you're funny like me, said Naruto. You didn't get all your good things from your mother alone, said Tajima. As he gave Naruto the sword, who accepted it? As Tajima was smiling proudly. I will make this right, son. My only regret was, it took me going this south to understand you. As Tajima felt quite ashamed of his son's earlier treatment, all these years that he did, his pain over the loss of his wife made him blind to the diamond that she had left behind. And even if the entire clan today spat upon his son, Tajima was proud of him. Better late than never, father, said Naruto. As Naruto offered his hand, despite everything Tajima put him through, as Tajima was just speechless towards the boy and he felt something stir. He felt regret, he felt pain, but he felt proud as he kneeled and hugged his son. I'm so proud of you, my son, he said. As Naruto never received a hug like this from his father before, he never received a hug so he was unused to it. But he could feel his father regret, his father pain, and how proud his father was of him. Time skip. Once he walked the streets, people never recognized him. After all, he was not as special as his brothers. But once he won that battle with the Senjus, awakening the Sharingan, he became popular overnight. He still had that attention but once there was respect and honor, now there was hatred. All of them looked at him with hatred because he was a kin slayer. As soon as his back was turned they whispered. They did not say anything in front of his face but when his back was turned they whispered and he heard them. But he smiled walking tall and proud and that seemed to piss them off even more. As he looked into their hateful eyes, those haunted words came back in his heart. The ones that he heard on that night, the reason he raised his blade and killed his fellow clansmen, the same word that led to what he was now, to make these people judge him as a kin slayer. But he reminded himself it was his choice, and now he had to bear it. One of the older women spat at his feet, as Naruto gave a mocking bow in return. A middle-aged man gave him the middle finger, as he received the same gesture. A child younger than him threw a pebble, but he easily avoided it as he looked towards a mass of people. Is that all, he said. I would think the blood of a dragon is more capable than that, he teased. They flinch as they clear a path, leading towards the gate. Even if the orders are not to their liking, they could not really do anything about it. But as he walked through the streets leading to the path outside, he felt so alone. Time skip. When those pair of demonic eyes opened, he expected a lot of things, but what he saw was sadness. Kinslayer. Nurta Bridge liked that name, not expecting the fox to call him that. He was surprised. How would he? These ears can hear. Far, said the fox. Did you think I could keep an eye on your clan from here if I did not know what is going on? Said Krama. Then you know what happened, said Naruto. Krama nod, as Naruto shrugged. Go on, mock me then, I don't mind. As the fox just stared at him. Is that what you want? As Naruto shook his head. It doesn't matter what I want. Well, it matters to me. As Naruto was surprised. As he looked into Krama's eyes, seeing no deceit or lies. Why? Naruto asked. Because I know the truth, Krama whispered. As Naruto looked towards him sternly, you will never say another word about that. And Krama simply nodded. You remind me of a boy I once knew, before he changed and became something I could never recognize. Who? Naruto asked. Silence was his answer. Well, the beast was like that, sometimes. He never told him anything. Krama watched as Naruto pulled out a dozen scrolls and released. A lot of food. As Naruto struggled, Krama stared at him. Thought we might share one last meal before I leave. I don't have any need to eat, Krama reminded. As Naruto rolled his eyes, humor me, Papa Bear, said Naruto. I am the great fox, Kinslayer, Krama roared. 
As Nurta chuckled, whatever he said, as cram aside, as they both dug into their meals, until halfway in they froze. As they turned their head, as Nurta pulled out his blade, as Krama got on four legs, towering over Naruto, we got company. Krama waited in anticipation as he sensed the mass of enemies entering into the forest. There were quite a lot of them as he looked towards Naruto, who stood calm and collected. There was strength and grace in his posture as he stood. The way he unsheathed his blade and hand lit showed great skill. His Sharingan flared the life, scanning for the first sight of their enemy. But the most striking feature about the boy was the way he looked. He looked just like the one that Krama knew a long time ago. The resemblance was disturbing, but unlike the last time, this time he had a faint of hope in his heart. Because Nurta having the great looks like his ancestor, and the fact that he had the power as well. But something was different. Naruto Uchiha was a good man, a person who loved his family and his clan going so far to sully his own life, to protect all that he cared about. And the other one chose power over blood. Kram could only hope that his sense of loyalty did not fade away, just like other Uchiha's over time. Even if today he was known as a king slayer, Kram rather have him beside him than any other Uchiha. He was brought from his thoughts when Naruto spoke, they're here. Krama smirk as a dozens of armed warriors dressed in heavy armor stopped upon seeing him. Their wide and terrifying eyes took in his form as they were afraid, seeing his menacing nine tails whooshing behind him. He couldn't help but laugh at their fear, but he felt internally disgust because they were the blood of a man that he had dearly loved, Kaguya and Hagromo clan. Quite strange seeing them together, said Naruto curiously. He was troubled by this new development. As they whisper something before looking towards Grandma, who growled angrily, as Naruto looked up towards the fox. Something tell me that they're here for you, and you as well. They plan to either kill you or capture you for the Sharingan, Grandma said. As Grandma watched as Naruto's eyes turned so cold, he actually felt a bit of a chill. Scared Kingslayer, asked Grandma. In your dream, fox, said Naruto. There are quite a few of them, Kram asked, amused. Do you forget who I am, said Naruto, arrogance in his tone, showing that fame Uchiha smirked as Kram sat back on the ground. Go on then, humor me, he said, as Naruto smirked. I don't work for a free fox, he said. Hmm, you're interesting, Kingslayer. Show me what you got first, said Kram, as Naruto gave a mocking bow. I'm your humble servant, Papa Bear, said Naruto. Kram snarled at that nickname, but before he could reply, Naruto stepped forward towards the approaching force. The enemy shot forward, thunderous battle cries, their weapons screaming for blood. Their intention was clear. As Naruto blade started to glow, bright blue as he poured chakra into it. Krama eyes narrowed, he knew this blade. He knew the one that used in battle and never had this blade been broken. And now watching that blade being wheeled by this boy, remove all doubts from Krama's mind. Indra, even dead you still live on. It seems this time you are truly reborn in this boy. Kram had felt something inside Naruto the first time he encountered Naruto by accident. This boy was different from the rest of clan. His features, his chakra, his skills. When the boy spoke of his family, his dead brothers, Kram had felt the love and affection that this boy had for his brothers, just like Incha before everything went wrong. As Naruto was here to the same loyalty and honor that Incha had. The only thing different between those two was that Naruto gave up his honor and his life for his family, while Inja gave up on his own family in the end. As Naruto twists and stabbed his blade into the earth, the ground trembled. Rock and debris fell from the valley because of the tremors, sending the enemy forces into disarray. And then Naruto charged. He appeared behind his first opponent that's on chain as he cleaved the teenage boy into half. He twists as electricity rain from his right hand. Stunning five more enemies. He brought his blade up, blocking a strike from a Kaguya woman who snarled, angry at him. Her mistake, her biggest one, was looking directly into his eyes, and she was done as he beheaded her mercilessly. Her clansmen started back away. The stench of death and rotting bodies no longer bother him anymore. He has seen and done much worse. He was a kin slayer, and these people meant nothing to him. Realizing that they were vulnerable going up against him alone. They combined their strength and released a volley of kunais towards him. It was a barrage. As Naruto released a massive shockwave of chakra from his body, it was so potent it blew away all of the kunais. He
He slammed his hand together as he finished gathering his chakra. Water release. Water dragon bullet technique. Kurama watching shock as Naruto created two giant water dragon out of thin air. As Naruto surged electricity through them, as the dragons roared, they shot forward. The enemies were shocked as they did not expect such power out of one so young. Several enemies were crushed mercilessly as the rest of them managed to jump away. As Naruto stepped towards a man who was on the ground, his body was crushed but he was still alive. As Naruto dried his blade into the man's head, ending his last moments. Monster, one of the Hagurumo boys called him. As Naruto smirked, as the enemy surrounded him, they clearly don't want me to release my jutsu again. As they refused to look in his eyes, ten were left out of the lot that arrived. As he picked up one of the swords from a nearby dead Hagurumo member, as he wielded two blades, Kurama watches this young boy face against man and woman that were far older and experienced than him. But he did not back down, he did not show a glimpse of fear. There was a smile on his face as all the enemies pounced to attack him at once. As Naruto moved and broke two blades from a two, Hagurumo members using his ancestral blade to slit their throats wide open. With his stolen sword, he blocked a slash aimed towards his back. As he spin and deliver a massive roundhouse kick, sending two of his enemies crushing hard. As Krama watches all the enemies charge, as Krama laughs. As Naruto vanished in a fast sunshin, three men and one woman fell to the ground dead, their heads completely sliced off. The remaining enemies glare at him strongly as he rotated their blade, trying to find some way of catching his boy off guard, trying to surround him, but their effort seemed to be at waste. As Naruto blocked five blades, that slammed against his ancestral blade with his single hand. As he pushed them back, he used that moment to stab through two hearts cleanly. Such speed and quite deadly accuracy. With just three enemies remaining, his smirk grew wider. But before he could do anything else, those three enemies were grabbed by tails. And he was showered in flesh and gore as the enemies were crushed mercilessly. He glared at the fox that laughed. You stole my kill, said Naruto. Like the Shower King Slayer, Kurama asked the smirk. As Naruto threw the stolen blade away and wiped the blood off his ancestral blade. As he walked towards the Kaguya woman, he had stabbed her in the chest, he missed her heart. As the wound was close and she would die at any moment. But even in her pain, she reached towards his eye, waiting to tear them away from him. He grabbed her hand roughly as he peered into her mind with a Sharingan. By the time he was done, he was alarmed what he saw. But he maintained his composure. Rest now, said Naruto. The woman named Kimi glared at him as her eyes closed forever. When he got from the course, he saw Kurama watching him intensely. What? said Naruto. She was your enemy, Kurama said. As Naruto smiled. Sometimes it is better to bestow mercy on our enemies, said Naruto kindly. But you enjoy killing them, Kurama said. I enjoy battle, not the kill, said Naruto. Remember that. Why? Kurama asked. All life is precious, said Naruto. Then why do you fight at all, Krama asked, as he saw a frown up right on the boy's face. Because I serve my family and my clan, it's my duty to protect them, no matter the cost or pride. Then what is your dream, Krama asked, something other than keeping your family safe. As Naruto went silent for a long moment, as he sheathed his ancestral blade, I guess, Krama watched as he hesitated. For once in my life, I want. This endless fighting to be over, he said. As he glanced at night sky with the moon, lighting up the landscape. I want to serve something greater than my life. Something which I believe in, he said. I want to end this warfare and create a place where people can live together without any prejudice. And for that dream, I would gladly risk my honor and my life. You're different than your mad clan, said Kramer. As Naruto smirked, told you that we're not all crazy, he said. Kramer just laughed. As a boy smiled as he asked something. Do you have any family, Krama? He asked. The question, asked out of curiosity, brought pain to the fox as he closed his eyes. Despite his young age, Naruto understand the beast didn't want to talk about this. So he turned and started to walk away. King Slayer, asked Naruto pause. Why? Did those clan attack? Word has got out about the Sharingan being reawakening me and my brother. All clans are aware about the lost power regaining in my clan. And they want to put a stop to it. Strangely, the Kaguya clan was informed by someone about your existence, and they came here to capture you. Even if they brought their entire forces, that wouldn't be enough, said Kurama. 
This was a test, said Naruto. And we passed, Kurama said. As Naruto nodded, next time, the attack will be a bigger one. I need to see my family, said Naruto. They informed them about this. And tell them about me as well, Kurama asked dangerously. As Naruto smiled, no, I gave you my word. I will keep your existence. A secret from my clan, and I will not go back on my word. Kurama relaxed as he looked quite pleased with that decision. As he relaxed, where will you go? As Naruto shrugged, wherever the duty commands me. Farewell, Kingslayer, said Kurama. You too, Papa Bear, said Naruto, as he walked away. Time skipped. Tajima looked at his blood-stained son. Thankfully, he was glad that Naruto did not walk through the street coming here, because people would think that he murdered more clan members. Although he was surprised that Naruto created a secret passage so that he could go and come back when he pleased, but he had something else on his mind. You killed them all in single combat, said Neri. Madara scoffed, of course. He's the best swordsman I've ever seen. He can handle it. Regardless, it seems our enemies are now actively moving against us. We need to prepare, said Tajima. We need to gather our allies, get more political and monetary support from the various daimyos. It will take time, brother, said Neri, as Tajima nodded. Then you leave in two hours. I am increasing the armed force and servants that will be assisting you. Naruto, you will be responsible for your own safety. No harm will fall on Nirisama. As long as there is life in me, said Naruto. What will you do, brother? asked Neri. As Tachima looked towards Madara, we will start attacking the Senjus and their allies. Our goal will be to grab as much territory and contact as we can while weakening our sworn enemy. I will personally lead this campaign with Madara acting as my second, said Tachima. As that made Madara smile, good. I've been waiting to meet those three huggers pay for what they did to my brother, said Madara, with a dark, wicked look in his eyes. But Naruto frowned as he wondered what will happen if they kill them all, the men, the women and children. Yes, what will happen when they defeat the Senjos? What then? Would they then move on to fight some other clan? What was the meaning behind this senseless slaughter? Was there a way to stop it or at least a lesson, the endless slaughter? Many questions were on his mind but at the same time he knew his duty. He was a Uchiha and he knew his responsibility. And no matter his personal feelings, he would serve his clan and that is what he will do. But things were starting up once again and this time, the battle was going to be immense. Which one of them will fall? The Uchiha's the Senjus? Or is there someone in the works playing everyone? But guys, the end of right here. If you want to see the next part do, like, subscribe, comment down below and turn on the bell notifications they posted. Free memberships to all of your friends in social media platform. And also guys, stay in tune for the new episodes coming over in the King 2 and in the King 3. If you're new, yes, you heard that correctly in these three channels. Anime King, Anime King 2, Anime King 3, which I both want to find every single day for you guys to enjoy. So go ahead and click that red subscribe button to become part of the making family. And thank you for all of your help and your support. Remember to comment down below and tell me if you're new. I'll be replying talking back to all of you. So yeah, what do you say without further ado, we get the hell out of here. See you guys soon. Peace out.